Where has Allah established, established two feet for himself? Where has Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi established two feet for Allah? This is a challenge to the Salafiyyah that bring forth your evidence. Sultan al albani has refuted Uthaymi, has refuted this principle. And here you are acting like your own house is all in order. Everything is hunky-dory. Let alone your methodology, your dawah. Your aqidah is in a state of confusion. Your aqidah is in a state of disarray. Anyway, coming straight on to my topic now. The topic is of um, the qadam or the rijl, what is referred to in Arabic uh, literally as a foot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, brothers and sisters, you all know that to establish something regarding Allah, his names, his attributes, right? We need concrete evidence. We need definitive evidence. We need something which is qat'i. Now, this is a verse of the Holy Quran. This is, you know, authentic. Uh, much transmitted mutawatir ahadith. Um, but let alone this, these people use analogy and qiyas and comparison between human and established things for Allah without the slightest evidence. And I'm going to come straight on to this now. So with regards to the foot or what is referred to as uh, a foot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people quote the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting his qadam or his rijl over uh, Jahannam. Fine, the Ahlul Sunnah do not reject this. Yes, there are differences in interpretation. You hold on to yours if you want and the Ahlul Sunnah have theirs. We very, very categorically say whatever it means, we can definitely say this is not a limb. We can definitely say this is not physical. We can definitely say this is not an, or a, a body part. Right. It does not have a, a dimension to it. It does not have, you know, um, a, a 3D form to it. Right. These are the things that we make clear. And then we say we believe in it. Whatever Allah has intended. Not a problem. We believe in whatever Allah has intended. And this is the methodology of the earlier scholars as well. Pass over it like it has come. Don't delve into it. Don't argue over it and move on. But these people are hell-bent on literalism, on keeping things on their literal meaning, even if it's regarding Allah, even if it creates, uh, you know, the image of um, body parts and limbs and uh, uh, organs and, you know, um, human attributes and traits in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people will not hesitate to say it's exactly as uh, it is in the dictionary. Now, my brothers and sisters, with regards to the issue of uh, the qadam or the rijl or what is referred to as a foot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people have gone one step ahead now. You, you saw the last video of Mawlana Abdul Halim and um, in which he showed a Salafi speaker talking about the two feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he very clearly said that this is a qiyas, this is an analogy, this is a comparison. We have come to this conclusion by comparing Allah with human beings because two in feet is a sign of completeness. This is why we say, without evidence from Quran and Sunnah, we say Allah has two feet as well. Astaghfirullah, may Allah safeguard us from such analogy of Allah with his creation. But the issue here is, brothers, the Salafi seniors, even their own house is not in order. So now, Uthaymeen, I'm going to show you a clip where Uthaymeen is establishing uh, two feet for Allah. Now, let me make one thing very clear. That for the, what they refer to as two feet, the one I've mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, Allah putting his rijal or his qadam on Jahannam, no one disputes that. The dispute is in the meaning. We negate body parts. They don't uh, negate body parts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say, don't negate anything which Allah hasn't negated. In other words, this is a hidden call to keep it on its literal meaning and to keep it on the meaning of a limb. Anyway, as for the, the dual um, aspect of feet, two feet. These people like Uthaymeen and their seniors like Uthaymeen bring um, a mawquf hadith. A mawquf hadith is that which ends on the Sahabi. So the statement or um, you know the statements of uh, a Sahabi or Sahaba. This is known as a hadith, a report, a statement of a Sahabi. Now under the tafsir of Ayatul Kursi, Okay, um, there you will find some reports in the books of Ahlul Sunnah 
from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah and I am not disputing the authenticity of the chain here. He says, مَوْضِعُ قَدَمَ يِلَّهِ تَعَالَى That the kursi is the place of the two feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all they have on this topic. So they don't have anything from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Uthaymeen, the Salafi Imam, establish, establishes two feet for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas when we turn to, and, and, and I'd like you to listen to this clip so that nobody can dispute. And in this very clearly, Uthaymeen is establishing two feet for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الكرسي موضع القدمين إثبات القدم لله عز وجل حق قد صح به الحديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في قوله لا تزال جهنم يلقى فيها وهي تقول هل من مزيد حتى يضع رب العزة فيها قدمه أو رجله فينزوي بعضها إلى بعض وتقول قط قط لكن إثبات القدمين لا أعلمه إلا في هذا الحديث يعني إثبات القدمين اثنين لا أعلمه إلا في هذا الحديث وأما القدم فهو الثابت في صحيح البخاري وغيره لكن مع هذا نقول إن إثبات القدمين لا يعني التمثيل أبدا فهو كإثبات الوجه والعين والذات نعم لا ليس ليس مماثلا للخلق نعلم ذلك علم اليقين لاننا نعلم عن طريق السمع بان الله ليس كمثله شيء ونعلم عن طريق العقل بانه لا يمكن ان يكون المخلوق مثل الخالق ابدا فلذلك التماثل ممنوع حتى فيما توافق فيه المعنيان في اللفظ فان الحقيقه مختلفه so brothers, you've listened to this clip. Now let's move on to Nasiruddin al-Albani. So I have in front of me here the uh, mawsu'a of the Allama Nasiruddin al-Albani. Um, this is a compilation of the questions posed to him, his answers, and it was uh, transcribed. And basically, uh, this is the first part, uh, page number 308, 309, and 310. And in a nutshell here, he's being asked regarding um, the statement of a Sahabi can be used in Aqidah to establish a belief, a creed. And he says that, look, if the statement of a Sahabi is something which, um, you know, is mudrak bil qiyas. So in other words, it's something that it can be his own ijtihad and his own inference. It's his own ijtihad, it's his own deduction from Quran and Sunnah regarding an issue. If it's on a topic like this, then we respect that as his statement, but it cannot be used in Aqidah and Islamic creed because it's not Quran and Sunnah. It's considered his own rai and his own uh, opinion and his own ijtihad and deduction. First thing, fine. Nobody's got an issue with that. Second thing is that he says, if it's regarding the unseen, right, then the unseen has two possibilities, right? If it's regarding the unseen and it's related to Quran, it's related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's related to those topics which the Sahabi could not have known, okay, without hearing it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then this will be fi hukm al marfu This will be in the same category in terms of, you know, proving to be an evidence as the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, find this can be used in Aqidah. But then he says, if it's something regarding the unseen, however, there's a possibility this Sahabi could have took it from the, those who embrace Islam, from the people of the book, and they brought with them many things from their previous uh, scriptures and he could have took it from them and passed this on. If it has this possibility, then this statement cannot be used in the field of Aqidah, the names and attributes and generally to prove an Aqidah in Islam, to prove a creed in Islam. Now, 
These scans will be presented on the screen, inshallah. I'd just like you to hear this from Nasiruddin Al Albani himself. بالنسبة لصفات الله تبارك وتعالى هي توقيفية لا مجال للرأي والاجتهاد فيها فمسألة إثبات القدمين لله تبارك وتعالى بقول ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما عندما سئل عن الكرسي فقال هو موضع القدمين علما بأن النصوص الواردة في السنة جاءت بإفراد صفة الرجل لله جل وعلا فهل إذا أثبتنا القدمين لله عز وجل نكون قد خالفنا القاعدة المذكورة وهي أن صفات الله توقفية لا مجال للرأي والاجتهاد فيها أم أننا نقتصر على إثبات الرجل بمفردها ونقف عن إثبات تثنية إثبات القدمين حديث ابن عباس كما تعلم هو موقوف نعم والأحاديث الموقوفة لا يطلق فيها القول بأن في حكم مرفوع أو أن ليست في حكم المرفوع بل لابد في ذلك من التفصيل والذي انتهى إليه علمي هو التالي إذا كان الحديث الموقوف لا يمكن أن يقال من قبل الرأي والإحياد أولا ولا يحتمل أن يكون من الإسرائيليات حين ذاك يكون له حكما المرفوع هذا الحديث ليس من هذا القبيل لأنه يحتمل أن يكون من الإسرائيليات بخلاف مثلا الحديث الآخر عن ابن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما الذي يقول بأن القرآن أنزل جملة واحدة إلى بيت العزة في سماء الدنيا ثم أنزل أنجما هذا لا يمكن أن يكون إسرائيليا لأنه يتحدث عن القرآن ولا يمكن أن يكون بالرأي والاجتهاد لأنه يتحدث عن أمر غيبي فإذا له حكم مرفوع أما هذا فليس كذلك وبهذا القدر كفاية والحمد لله رب العالمين So brothers, you heard this from Nasiruddin Al-Albani himself. And in a nutshell, he is very clearly saying what I've explained to you. Is if it's from the Israeliyat, in other words, the people uh, 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 who embrace Islam from the people of the book. And then, you know, um, uh, this Sahabi could have took it from them, right? And, cont- you know, passed this on. If it has this possibility, then this cannot be used as an Aqidah. And in this clip, he makes very clear this principle because he applies this principle to the actual qadamain, isbatul qadamain lillahi ta'ala, establishing two feet for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nasiruddin al-Bani makes very clear that two feet cannot be established for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this has the possibility of being from the people of the book. Hence, this is not strong enough to be an evidence in Sharia. So you see, the Salafiya have opposed Nasiruddin al-Bani. They've left this principle. The Salafiyya are establishing an attribute of Allah uh, and according to their principles, a limb of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without evidence from Quran, without evidence from Sunnah. And as have you seen from the previous video of Mawlana Abdul Halim, from the, their own scholars to establish this, they make very clear that they are in need of Qiyas, they are in need of analogical reasoning in comparing human beings with Allah to establish what they refer to as two feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is Nasiruddin al-Albani's own principle, which I am using against the Salafiyya. My question is very simple. You accuse people of opposing the Quran and Sunnah, yet your own major imams like Uthaymeen have gone against the Quran and the Sunnah 
without a single verse of the Holy Quran, without a single hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they are establishing a limb for Allah subhanahu wa taala, of an extra what they refer to as a foot for Allah subhanahu wa taala. Astaghfirullah, may Allah subhanahu wa taala safeguard us from such fitna, from such you know weak deductions, from such hypocrisy where on the one hand we're saying Quran and a Sunnah as understood by the self of this Ummah and now without Quran without any Sunnah and those you know a single narration what they mean says this is all we have Maudi'u Qadamayillah the statement of Ibn Abbas عنهما, which according to Nasiruddin al-Albani has the possibility of coming from the people of the book and here Uthaymin is establishing this as a foot for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's saying not only does he have one astaghfirullah like is in Sahih al-Bukhari this establishes two feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't this opposition to Quran isn't this mukhalafat with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam isn't this deducing and actually affirming for Allah so you say nusbitu ma you know athbat Allah li nafsi they keep saying this in their books we establish what Allah has established for himself where has it? Allah established two feet for himself Whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established two feet for Allah. This is a challenge to the Salafiyyah that bring forth your evidence. Your own Imam has said, this is all we have. Nasiruddin al-Albani has refuted Uthaymeen, has refuted this principle. And here you are acting like your own house is all in order. Everything is hunky-dory. It's nothing of the sort. Your own aqidah, let alone your methodology, your da'wah. Your aqidah is in a state of confusion. Your aqidah is in a state of disarray. May Allah safeguard us from your fitna and the fitna of your young graduates. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Aya talib al-ilmi qum la tanam fa inna al-zamana qadha. Aya talib al-ilmi qum la tanam fa inna al-zamana qadha wa ansaram. Fa kun ma hayyita dhaninan bihi fa dhannuka bil waqti ayinu al-karam. Wa kun hilsa darsika wa vrah bihi ta kun qaidan fi ghadin l-umam. Wa badir shababaka min qabli an yubqattia azmaka سيف الهرم ودع ما استطعت فضول اختلاط وأكل ونوم وقول يذم وصاحب نبيلا ولا 